Now, for Jerry Wenlock, her visit to Ireland this week has a very special purpose. She's here to trace her birth mother. After going looking for her birth cert at age 16, Jerry made a shocking discovery. She'd been fostered. Now she's hoping that records here will help her find out more about her Irish mother. When she actually told me, I think I was prepared for it in a way because I'd been to the registry office and they told me that there was no no Geraldine Potter, you better go home and speak to your mother and find out what's going on. So I thought, oh, you know, she's not told me, I've got, you know, she's got to tell me now because I think maybe I'd approached it because I said things to her like people keep saying that I look Irish and, you know, I thought she'd come out with it. And it didn't cross my mind really to start looking uh, for my real mother until I'd had my own children, I suppose. And then I started it, I attempted it, and it got complicated because I then realised I had nothing to go on. I've started looking now because I think from um, knowing, giving some history to my family about my, my, my own family, um, any medical problems at all, I would like to know. I, you know, I'm getting to a point in my life where maybe something, um, you know, is going to happen to me in my health. I'd like to know where it's come from. I'd like to know who the father was, obviously, if I could. Um, I'd like to know the state she was. I'd just like to know more about my mother. Well, Geraldine uh, joins us now, or Jerry, as you prefer to be called. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Jim. Uh, Good morning. Thanks for coming on this show. morning. Thank you. Um, this search, like you discovered when you were 16, uh, purely by accident. By the way, you, you were on your way at 16 to get married. Yes. That was uh, pretty young. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, I think, something you'd want to do. You know, you suddenly think um, a good reason to leave home would be to get married. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a way of leaving home early, really. Mm -hmm. mm. When, when you were told this, that, listen, we have no record here of Jerry Potter and you went home and you told and you said this to to your mum yes yeah um, did she deny it did she dismiss it she denied it at first yes um, she really wanted us all to feel that we were hers mm -hmm. and it was something in those days they hadn't had any training from you know they didn't know how to handle it so um, it was something that I think she felt hard to discuss with us um, eventually she had to Mm -hmm. well, she, she was some woman. She had 12 of her own children. Yes. And then after they grew up, she took in then f uh, five foster children? She, she, she sort of cared for children. Um, and some of us obviously stayed with her longer because we weren't collected or mm -hmm. for whatever reason it was. My mother decided she couldn't cope. Um, so she just hung on to four of us in the end. But she did have more coming and going. But at the time, she fostered four of us. So I, I know that your reason here is to try and find your birth mother, but just yes. to, to talk about the woman who, who is your mother, who mm -hmm. brought you up, why, why didn't she adopt you? Because my mother left. Apparently the papers would be needed to be signed. Um, whether my mother thought at the time that she could possibly go back and get me, collect me, maybe she thought she could maybe make her life more secure, mm -hmm. um, or maybe she just didn't have time to hang around to get the details, whatever, for adoption in those times. Mm -hmm. Now you found out when you were 16, um, when you went to get your birth certificate, but surely growing up you must have realised, I mean considering first of all your mother was in her 50s when, when she mm. took you in, mm. um, and all your other siblings probably looked completely different yeah. to you. Yeah. I mean, there must have well, been some... You say that. It was such a big family. Some of them actually <laughs> did look like me. <laughs> and I remember my mother saying sometimes, oh, you look like Sheila, or you look like um, so-and-so. And, you know, these little bits, snippets would, mm -hmm. would sort of pop up now and again. So you... And in fact, I found myself thinking sometimes, maybe I'm Sheila's baby, maybe I was her child. And, yeah. you know, so there are things, there were similarities, mm -hmm. strangely enough. And they used to tell you at school that you were able to do a very good Irish accent. Yes, yes, which I, I, I used to do on the, on the bus on the way home from school. Um, that was my thing, to do the Irish accent. And so many people used to say to me, oh, you must be Irish, you look Irish. And, mm -hmm. and I'd say to my mother, well, strange, lots of people say to me, I look Irish. And she'd just sort of laugh it off, you know. And yeah. It's mm -hmm. her way of coping with it. Mm. By all accounts, from looking at the, those pictures just a few minutes ago, you had a happy childhood. I did, yeah. yes. You I had I an idyllic it. child, yes. I was very lucky, very lucky. Um, I had, my mother had a big family, and I was sent to um, her own children 
her own children had their children, so mm -hmm. she was a grandmother. So I would go off to her children and play with their children, who were mm -hmm. my age at the time. And I, I'd go all over the country and have all these lovely holidays. I'd stay on a farm and um, go, to the, go to Wales. We used to go camping mm -hmm. and um, lots of different holidays I had every year. So I, I was very fortunate. So your mother gave you an amazing life. Yes, in her own. I mean, we didn't have money. We had, there was a lot of us. Um, but we had each other and we, you know, we, yes, I was very happy. So once you found out that you ha had been given up, um, mm. you didn't feel the need, you said, because you had such a lovely life to yes. go searching for your biological mother. Then. Yes, I think um, there were lots of different reasons. I mean, one reason was I didn't want to go upsetting my foster mother and her life and mm -hmm. thinking, you know, that she might have a secret life and doesn't want people to know. Um, the other thing was it was so time consuming, I had nothing to go on really. And also, um, it, it, when you're younger, these things don't really sort of play, if you've had a good life anyway, they're not so important. I, well, I didn't feel I was missing out too much. So why now do you, do you want to try and find this? Um, I think it's where I've, I've got to really with my health, my family would like to know more. Um, I'd like to hand something down to them about my own family. Mm -hmm. um, and I, just curiosity really, you know, it's, you know, if I said to you, would you like, if you didn't know your mother or didn't know who she was, would you not like to know more about her? Yeah. Yeah, well, naturally. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, that's really where I've got so to. It's not like mm. there was a fear, there's, there's been a void in, in your life or no. there's been an emptiness? No love, no, I, I've, I've been lucky, I've had a lovely family. Um, I've been lucky in lots of ways, but I think I just want to sort of tie up those loose ends now. Okay. Yeah. Is there not a feeling mm. of, you know, I was initially abandoned, though? Um, I don't think I feel I was... I don't feel any, any upset about... I don't ever think the word abandoned comes into it. Okay. I feel that she was under a lot of pressure Actually. at the time. Mm -hmm. And I feel sorry for my mother. I think it must have been dreadful at the time for what Who, they went through. I don't think anybody wants to abandon, you know, yeah. the, their child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, back then, yeah. I mean, she I, was I, probably I, I mean, young. I like to feel I wasn't abandoned. I, I like to feel that she just did what she had to do she at the time. Do, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was her way of coping with it. I mean, no mum wants to, you know, give up their child no. in, no. Any, in any case, yeah. but yeah. she was probably under a lot of yeah. stress. But I, I don't think she could have done a better thing than she did. Yeah, because you had such a happy life. Yes. Tell us what you know about your mother. My foster mother or my... Your, your biological mother. Right. Um, what I know is that she was Irish. Um, she um, came over... I don't know whether she was pregnant when she came over from Ireland or whether um, she got pregnant in, in England. Um, she lived in Kensington in London at the time of having me um, and she hung around for about maybe up to 10 months before she went home. She worked as a housekeeper in London at that time um, and she had uh, very long reddish hair, quite slim and she wore seam stockings apparently when she came come to see me. My, my younger sister remembers her seam stockings. And she um, had very sl slim fingers. She okay. said, I remember her hands. They were very slim. So she slim. did come to visit.